In this lecture, I will introduce you to JPA. At the end of it, you will know what an ORM is, why we need it and what it does and some key terms in the ORM and JPA space. We typically store our data in a database and usually it is a relational database wherein we store the data in rows and columns or tables. These tables are linked to each other through primary keys and then foreign keys and there can be multiple relationships. There can be multiple tables which are related to each other. Then we use joins to retrieve the data from multiple tables in one shot. Whereas in the Java or object oriented world, we deal with classes and then we create instances of these classes and these classes have properties or the objects have properties that map to the columns in the database. So instead of we writing the SQL, retrieving the data and then mapping them to our Java objects, wherein we have inheritance, encapsulation and all that or one class depending on another class, one class using another class, one class composed of another class, so on and so forth. All that instead of we managing it, the object relational mapping tools or the ORM tools or frameworks does the job for us. We as Java developers simply map our Java classes and their properties to the database columns using annotations or XML. And once we do that, we can pretty much query on our Java objects and these ORM tools will generate the SQL from what we write, from the queries we write in object-oriented language or simply by calling some methods. These frameworks will generate the queries, the SQL queries, get the data, map them to our entities and give the objects back to us. So isn't that cool? We do it using tools like Hibernate, Toplink, there are several other ORM tools. Prior to JPA, we had to learn the API of these tools separately. So if you are using Hibernate prior to introduction of JPA by Oracle, we had to learn Hibernate API. If we are using Toplink, then we had to learn Toplink API and so on and so forth. Sometimes Sun Microsystems or Oracle in the Java world or the open source world, it works backward. So first the ORM tools came in and several people have started using them and that is when the JPA standard came into picture. So Oracle released, those, released the standard and all the tools like Eclipse Link, Hibernate, Toplink, they all started complying to the JPA API. The advantage for us developers now is instead of learning each and every ORM API, we will simply learn the standard API like every other standard like the JMS standard, JDBC standard, JAX WS, JAX RS standards and specifications. We as developers will learn one single API and there are several other advantages of JPA. It gives us a JPQL Java persistence query language. It is an object oriented query language wherein we will be doing our select queries and all that on the objects internally as I said earlier. Queries, the SQL queries will be generated by the frameworks which implement JPA. JPA also offers a caching API wherein we can cache our objects to improve performance and it manages the entire life cycle of the entities we create of our Java objects that are mapped to the database tables. So now as I said, Eclipse Link, Hibernate, Toplink, all these ORM tools implement JPA. We as developers can simply switch from one ORM tool to another by simply changing our maven files or ant build scripts as long as we use the standard JPA Java persistence API in our code. So to quickly summarize, a ORM tool maps or makes our job as developer easier instead of we writing a lot of SQL statements and then getting the data, mapping it and all that. The ORM tools manage all that once we create entities and follow the rules of JPA by marking those entity with annotations or we can use XML configuration and they will generate the queries, execute the queries, map the data back into objects, map the data back into columns and rows if we give it an object and they do all that job, all that work. So there were there are several popular ORM tools like Hibernate and Toplink, Eclipse Link, so on. Before JPA, we had to learn each of those APIs separately. But once JPA came in, we only master the JPA API and then all those tools implement the JPA API.